today on the Transplant Helper, I hopefully want to comfort you just a little bit, give you a little bit of peace concerning the current heart transplant status listing system. Are there some things we're missing here? Maybe something you ought to know. I think there is. So go ahead and stay tuned. Hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification to become part of the Transplant Helper community. Hey folks, welcome to Transplant Helper again today. My name is Jim Merle and we're going to be talking again about the same old subject, the heart transplant status listing system. Now, I say that because we've already discussed it here on the program a couple of different times, so periodically throughout the video, I'm going to put a little link that pops out here from this corner that will let you go back and watch some of those preceding videos, maybe get a grasp on what the current heart transplant status listing system is and how it might be affecting your chances of receiving a heart transplant at this point. Now, with that said, one of the first videos I'm gonna be popping up for you in a minute, again, up in this corner, is really one that I did almost two years ago, at least a year and a half ago, when I kind of broke the news that this new status listing system was going to soon be implemented. Now, with that said, you'll find out in that video, and I'll remind you here, this transplant status listing system, which I need to stop saying that, has, has actually been a proposed system for almost a decade. And it's just now that we've gotten to the point where it kind of went through all of the deliberation, the argument, and finally got approved and now put into place. And basically the difference between the old system and the new is that the old system contained only a few statuses. There was status 1A, status 1B, status 2, and status seven and that's pretty much where all of us would have fallen maybe even as as late as like a year and a half two years ago if you were listed for heart transplant back when i was listed i was originally listed as a status 1b eventually got to a status 1a and was transplanted that's the old system it is no more at this point. The new system that has replaced it is one that doesn't contain just those few status listings. It actually contains a whole different uh, numbering system which consists of numbers one through seven, okay? Seven is your inactive, just like with the old system. Status one, which those no longer have an A and B, status one is the top of the list. And everything in between incrementally takes you from the bottom to the top or top to the bottom, however you want to see that. Now, one of the biggest fears with this, especially when the old system was phasing out, the new system was coming in, is that many people who were currently listed for transplant went into a panic and a tizzy because they got afraid, you know, what if I'm not listed as status one? Well, I ever be transplanted? Is this system going to be harder to be transplanted on and such? And I want to remind you my overall theory with that, and, and actually, actually it's proving to be the case, the sickest patients are still transplanted first, okay? Whether it's the old system with only a few listings or the new system with a seven, the sickest patients are supposed to be being transplanted first. So if you're at the top of the list, your chances are high. Just like with the old one versus being lower on the list, your chances are a little slimmer or less statistically uh, possible. Nonetheless, sickest patients transplanted first. Both systems, that is true about them. Now, with that said, we really go over and we start to examine the new system as they finally unveiled what it really can tell or, or uh, contains, I should say. We look at it and we say, for example, a status one, which there's no A or B again, there's status one, that's the top of the list. The new status one to be transplanted on that status or to be qualified for the status at least, you're going to have to be like on an ECMO device. And I've had videos about explaining what the ECMO is, whether you should want it or not. I'll put that up here in the corners and link it as well. Then you move on down the list. You've got like a status two category and the status threes both uh, attribute to this sometimes. you got people with something like an LVAD. I've done videos on that, yada, yada, link it up here. But, you know, there's just certain criteria now that are very clearly defined in the listing system that decides where you're going to be. And we look at that top tier, say, for example, status one, we say, well, I don't want to be on ECMO. To be on ECMO, you got to be on death's door. You got to be so sick, you know, in, in terrible condition. And that's true. But really, it was true about the old system. Status 1As, those people were the people who were the sickest, okay? Still the same thing, but it brings us to worry nonetheless. I've actually seen a number of people who were listed right before the transition, say, for example, as a status 1A, and then suddenly they come in the new system, they're like status 3 or the 1Bs, maybe 4s or whatever, and they look at that and they say, well, there it is. You know, I'm a status 4 now. I'll never be transplanted. My hope is done. You know, my life is over. That was it. They ruined me. 
okay? And I get that. And that's the 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 kind of eerie feeling I feel about this is the, the mental state. It's the, the worry, the concern that you're not going to make it to the top of the list and that you have to be so sick to get to the top of the list. I get that panic, but this video right here is all about trying to help you with that. The first way I want to do that is to continue to say the same thing that is the sickest patients go first. And if you're sick and your doctors deem you to be sick and they prove to say the United Network for Organ Sharing or whomever will handle yours that you're the sickest patient in your region, you are going to be transplanting. So it may be the case and you can look this up. I've got you know tons of resources on this and seen them myself but you can look this up and find out about maybe where you are in your region whether it be your your actual transplant center like mine which you would be out of that area say for example alabama as a whole out to your region which includes several of the southern states for me there are several regions you'll look yours up and you can try to decide who who are who are these people that are listed within the region and in that narrow versus wider realm alongside of me you know basically and i hate to use the word what's the competition look like am, am i here listed as status two and then there's say 16 status ones ahead of me yeah that may be the case but it also could be the case that you personally may be the highest listed person in your area or in your region or even at your center it could be to your advantage because if you had a a, a donor being offered that happened to be at your center they're coming to you first if there's any kind of match. So it all comes down to, you know, just the luck of the draw almost in that you may be the sickest person in an area and receive your organ. Now, back when I received my organ, uh, almost six years ago, here in a couple months, back when I received mine, my heart came out of Oklahoma because when they checked their region, their area, there wasn't a need for it. So it came all the way to me and I didn't appear to be probably, according to some criteria, the sickest patient in the world at that point, but I was the sickest patient at my transplant center. So the transfer was made. Here we go. The organ matched perfectly. I've got it. That's the thing. Now, here's what I really want you to know. And listen carefully to this because this is this is exciting news. This is what is thrilling me about this. In, in spite of all the worry, the panic, the dread of this new system, I have seen no less. And I'm not exaggerating here. And I'm friends with a lot of you over on Facebook and some of these groups. And so I watch these pages, you know. I have seen this week and, and well, I would say in the last seven days, I have seen no less than eight people being transplanted, okay? Eight heart transplants have occurred in the last seven days. Now, it's just what I've seen. There's probably been two or three times that many United States wide. I just don't know about it. But for my statistical, very unprofessional uh, statistical analysis here, I've seen no less than eight patients being transplanted this week. Now, here's the thing. Out of those eight patients that have been transplanted in the last seven days, I think only one of them was on ECMO. Only one. What does that mean? That means that seven patients this last seven day period have been transplanted under that current typical status one listing. At least they're not on ECMO. So maybe it's the case, and I think it is. I think this is evident. You can be transplanted. Say it again. You can be transplanted without being on ECMO. So the worry that I had, the concern that maybe you've had about this system that I'm going to end up on ECMO and then once I'm on ECMO, I'm, I'm teetering on a, a razor's edge of life and death and, you know, all of that may not matter as much. It may not matter as much, at least to you personally, because I've seen people, again, that are listed at different levels, one and down, that have been transplanted in the last seven days. To me, that is tremendously encouraging, okay? Now, I haven't gone through the status listing symbol uh, systems, the old nor the new, very detailed here. Again, that previous video I'll link up here somewhere. Uh, kind of goes into that a little bit more in depth, but I am telling you, by observation and by information, there are people being transplanted who are not status one right now and that is great news that's encouraging news and that means you whoever you are and whatever your status there's still a chance for you 
okay? And to me, this is no different than back in the day on the old status listing system when I saw status twos getting the call on a regular basis. If you're the match and if it's your turn, you're going and that's the end of that. Thank you so much for watching this video. And by the way, I want you to answer a couple of questions for me right now. Number one, are you currently waiting for transplant? And if so, what status are you listed at? If so if you're currently waiting for transplant, what status are you listed on as the new status listing system? And then in addition to that, if you've recently been transplanted, what status were you at when you were transplanted? I think this is going to be encouraging to us all. I think it'll be something great to share, but thank you so much. By the way, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, hit the subscribe button beneath the video. Be sure to hit the bell off beside that. Give this video a like if you liked it, and that way your friends will know about it and even maybe share it out. Who knows? It might help to encourage someone. Thank you so much for joining me today, but until next time, please stay stronger, friends.